In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Good morning, and a very warm welcome to our worship today on the Feast of Candlemas, as we celebrate the gift of Christ's light to the world, given first to the Holy Family, and then extended to those in the temple, the place of, the, of worship and pilgrimage at the heart of the city of Jerusalem. Dear friends, 40 days ago, we celebrated the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we recall the day on which he was presented in the temple, when he was offered to the Father and shown to his people. As a sign of his coming among us, his mother was purified, as we now come to him for cleansing. In their old age, Simeon and Anna recognised him as their Lord, as we today sing of his glory. In this Eucharist, we celebrate both the joy of his coming and his searching judgment, looking back to the day of his birth and forward to the coming days of his passion. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. You make our darkness to be light, for with you is the well of life, and in your light shall we see light. Blessed be God for ever. Now, if you have candles at home, please do feel free to light them as a reminder that Christ's light comes to every part of our world, not just our churches, but our communities, our families, our friends and our hearts. Lord God, the springing source of everlasting life, pour into our hearts of the hearts of your faithful people the brilliance of your eternal splendour, that we who by these kindling flames light up this temple to your glory may have the darkness of our souls dispelled and so be counted worthy to stand before you in that eternal city where you live and reign, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We listen to the opening hymn, Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence.
We wait for your loving kindness, O Lord, in the midst of your temple. Open to us the gates of righteousness, that we may enter and give thanks to the Lord. God is the Lord who has shown us light. Let us offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness. Let us pray. Lord, you fulfilled the hope of Simeon and Anna, who lived to welcome the Messiah. May we who have received these gifts beyond words, prepare to meet Christ Jesus when he comes to bring us to eternal life. For he is alive and reigns, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Malachi, chapter 3, beginning at the first verse. I am about to send my messenger to clear a path before me. Suddenly the Lord whom you seek will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight is here, here already, says the Lord of hosts. Who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand firm when he appears? He is like a refiner's fire, like a fuller's soap. He will take his seat, testifying and purifying. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. 
and so they will be fit to bring offerings to the Lord. Thus the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as they were in former days, in years long past. I shall appear before you in court, quick to testify against sorcerers, adulterers and perjurers, against those who cheat the hired labour of his wages, who wrong the widow and the fatherless, who thrust the alien aside, and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 to the end. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. This is the word of the Lord. Today the Lord is presented in his temple, in substance of our mortal nature. Alleluia. Today the Blessed Virgin comes to be purified in accordance with the law. Alleluia. Today old Simeon proclaims Christ as the light of the nations and the glory of Israel. Alleluia. Praise to Christ, the light of the world. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Then after the purification had been completed, in accordance with the law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as prescribed in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be deemed to belong to the Lord, and also to make the offering, as stated in the law, a pair of turtle doves or two young pig pigeons. There was at that time in Jerusalem a man called Simeon. This man was upright and devout, one who watched and waited for the restoration of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, he came into the temple. And when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what the law required, he took him in his arms, praised God and said, Now, Lord, you are releasing your servant in peace, according to your promise. For I have seen with my own eyes the deliverance you have made ready in full view of all nations, a light that will bring revelation to the Gentiles and glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother were full of wonder at what was being said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to be a sign that will be rejected, and you too will be pierced to the heart. Many in Israel will stand or fall because of him, 
and so the th secret thoughts of many will be laid bare. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was a very old woman who had lived seven years with her husband after she was first married, and then alone as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. Coming up at that very moment, she gave thanks to God, and she talked about the child to all who were looking for the liberation of, his, of Jerusalem. When they had done everything prescribed in the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew big and strong and full of wisdom, and God's favour was upon him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. One of the very fascinating things I've discovered as a preacher is that each week the lectionary readings, even although chosen decades ago to fit in with the particular Sunday in the church year, seem to relate very directly to what we're going through uh, at any given current situation. And it's in that sense, I believe, that God is speaking to us through his word making the Bible alive and relevant and up-to-date, uh, challenging us and changing us and comforting us, depending on our need at the time. So I was intrigued in coming to the Candlemas readings this week uh, to see if there was anything in there that would speak to our current situation. Uh, and I wasn't disappointed. And I hope that I'll be able to put this over in a way that will also resonate with you regarding the times that we're living in. The Candlemas story is the story of various people whose faith was being tested due to what seemed a very, very long delay. Uh, a delay in much spiritual activity in their church, in their city, and in their nation, it seemed to be far away, a long way in, in, in coming. And they must have wondered to themselves how long this state of affairs was going to go on for. Would there be any light at the end of the tunnel? Would their prayers ever be answered? Would the long for waited Messiah ever come to Israel? One of my uh, weaknesses, or to be really honest, sins, is the sin of impatience, which I confess to you now, my brothers and sisters. Uh, I hate queues. I hate queuing in the post office or in the supermarket. Uh, I hate being stuck in the traffic. I always find it such a waste of time. And uh, I suppose even in church life, I'm at my best, or those who work closest with me would say I'm at my worst, when I'm impatient and trying to make things happen in the church and quickly. And a phrase I've often used to justify this is, I haven't come here to let the grass grow under my feet. Time is slipping away. So, how are you all getting on with the lockdown? This whole business has been going on now for almost a year and we're probably getting impatient with it. Um, I'm certainly not good at waiting. And especially those of us who have grown up to enjoy the benefits of the instant world, we don't do waiting. For example, we enjoy instant coffee, instant uh, downloads, instant success. If we see a book that promises a shortcut to such and such, we'll read it. We buy time-saving devices. But now, in the lockdown, we just have to wait. There's nothing we can do about it. 
That's awful, isn't it? Simeon and Anna, the two main characters in the Candlemas story, belonged to a small group of believers within the wider Jewish church. And they are simply known by this phrase in Luke's Gospel as those who watched for the consolation of Israel, Luke 2.25. Although the NRSV, the Bible we mainly use, translates it as those who were looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And that, of course, is a correct translation. But the Greek word can also mean, and is translated in several translations, those who waited for the consolation of Israel. So put the two meanings together, and it's those who waited, but looking forward as they did so. That's a great concept, isn't it? For us stuck in lockdown, we're waiting, but also we're looking forward for the consolation of our world, our nation, our community. And Simeon and Anna and others who belonged to that group had been waiting for a very long time. In fact, the community had been waiting for 400 years for anything really living and dynamic to happen in Israel's faith. Let me explain the background. Uh, our first reading in the service today was from the book of the prophet Malachi, which is the last book in the Old Testament. And Malachi the prophet ministered to the returned exiles from Babylon who had come back to Jerusalem and Judah round about the year 400 BC. But they had grown lax in their spiritual lives, complacent in their religion. They offered lame sacrifices in their sacrifice. They were heartless in their worship and selective in their obedience. And they had failed to be loving and just to one another. And so the prophet Malachi came in their midst to remind them of the big picture that they had forgotten that above earth was heaven, that beyond time was eternity, that outlasting the material was the spiritual, that outshining their sublimest thoughts, aspirations and creations was the glory of God, whose light they were to reflect and whose presence they were destined to live in forever. But for the next 400 years there was very little happening in the spiritual or religious life of Israel compared with the glory days of the past. And so Luke begins his gospel with a group of people who were waiting, watching, looking expectantly for better days to come and yet it seemed such a long way off. 400 years, during which long wait there had been no prophets, nor Shekinah glory filling the temple. The word of the Lord was rare. Visions were not widespread in those days. The priesthood had become the placed men of the ruling dynasty. The service temple, the temple services formal and the purity of Judaism had been influenced by Greek culture. But, as I said, within this wider body there is a small group of believers for whom faith is a living thing and in whose heart hope sprung eternal, where others were becoming cynical or impatient or violent. In their heart there was real hope that God was on the move. Waiting, I find, uh, is a test. And we often cry with the psalmist, How long, O Lord, how long? But waiting can be a wonderful 
thing in our life that God is trying to use. God is using the waiting period to build something into our lives for the future. Because waiting patiently builds character and inward strength. It prepares us to meet life's challenges with a resilience that helps us to bounce back. The life of faith which we preach, the life in Christ, the Christian life truly lived, offers stability, resilience and patience during such times of waiting. We believe, and this sustains us during this time, we believe that there is a bigger picture, a purpose, a destiny for our lives and for our world. We believe that God is working his purpose out as year succeeds to year. But his calendar is not the same as our calendar. His time frame is not the same as ours. His time frame is actually existent. He is in no hurry while we are in an awful hurry. Psalm 90 verse 4 says a thousand years are like one day to the Lord and one day is like a thousand years. And during this time of waiting, we are called to be faithful, faithful, faithful to God, faithful to the church, faithful to one another and faithful to the vision and calling that we all had as individuals and as a church a year ago before we went into the first lockdown. Now to be faithful requires patience. It needs patience with the church that because we're not open at the moment, because we're not able to offer uh, you know great inspiring services where we can enjoy the physical atmosphere of coming together, because we're not able to visit you at home or care in the same sort of way, we still need to be very patient with the church. We need to be patient in the presence of God when we are in prayer and not to give up after two or three minutes when nothing is quote, happening, whatever we think should be happening. Uh, we need to be patient with the world around us, with their fears and anxieties, with their moaning and groaning and with their culture of blame and not to become cynical and to give up. Now what we're going through at the moment may not be ecstasy and bliss, but we do need to realise that God is on the move. He has not taken a break. His spirit is active and working. God is changing things in our world. He is changing us. He will bring this current situation to an end and we just need to hang on in there. So if you want to see renewal of life, if you want to come out of this still renewed and filled with the Spirit and in a relationship with Jesus, you need to be faithful when there's not a lot happening and when things seem dead and dry and when it, you could so easily walk away. But I think there was something holding Simeon and Anna. There was something holding the people of God during that time, giving them hope, giving them faith. Now, I will have been here for eight years in March and I don't know how to assess my ministry. Has it been one of success or failure? Don't know how we measure these kind of things. I don't know if the church will ever grow much beyond what it is at the moment. I don't know how many of our people will come back. I don't know if we'll be able to increase the Christian population of Porchester in the next census. Um, 
But it's somewhat cliched, but I still use the expression that God has not called me to be successful. He has called me to be faithful and to leave the results up to him. David Livingstone, the great missionary to Africa, so I am told, saw hardly any converts to Christ for all the years he was there. But he was faithful, believing that he was where God wanted him to be. And at one level, Jesus was not all that successful by the time he finished his ministry. There were very few disciples who followed him at the end. There were only 120 in Jerusalem when the church began. But Jesus was faithful through the things that he suffered. Even when every bone in his body was crying out for relief, where every sinew wanted relaxation, when every Pharisee and every fearful disciple and every demon in hell was screaming at him to give up and just go home and live a quiet life in Nazareth. He hung on in there. He was faithful. And Anna, one of the women in our gospel story, was a woman who was faithful in prayer. She just lived in the presence of God. She was always praying and praising and fasting. But there wasn't a lot of, uh, wasn't a lot of evidence that her prayers were being answered. Israel was still at a pretty low ebb spiritually. The temple priesthood formal, the services meaningless, the prophetic voice silent. And there were no signs that Israel's captivity by the Romans was ever coming to an end. But Anna prayed and prayed and prayed just the same. Faithfulness in prayer is something we, we find difficult. It's hard to pray regularly and for long because there are so many distractions, so many other thoughts fill our minds, so many prayers the evil one reminds us have not yet been answered. And so prayer falls by the wayside because there are just so many other things to do. But one day, coming back to the Candlemas story in Luke, one day the waiting was over. A young couple arrived at the temple, bringing a child in their arms, a child Jesus. A child who was to restore spiritual fervour among God's people. A child who was to pour out the Holy Spirit upon the faithful believers. A child who was to heal and deliver. A child who was to change multitudes and nations. And so Anna and Simeon received an amazing epiphany moment. Their eyes were opened, their hearts burned within them. They knew the promise had been fulfilled. Faithfulness had been rewarded. And this is a time for all of us to know that we are part of God's continuing ongoing story. This is a time of opportunity and renewal for your life and for the church. If we can be open as individuals in these days to the deep wells of the Holy Spirit that he is offering us. If we can be open to receive good teaching through the internet sermons and teaching, if we can be open to, re to read good books that we can still order from Amazon, if we can still be open to deep fellowship with one another through phone calls etc, then we will find the inspiration and we will find the strength to revive our life together and we will come out of this to build a church different but yet strong a church which will be a haven and a powerhouse for the renewal of our community in faith, in hope and love. God bless. Pray to the Father through Christ who is our light and life. We use the response, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. 
Father, your Christ is acclaimed as the glory of Israel. Look in mercy on your church, sharing his light. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Father, your Christ in his temple brings judgment on the world. Look in mercy on the nations who long for his justice. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Father, your Christ who was rich, for our sakes became poor. Look in mercy on the needy, suffering with him. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Father, your Christ is the one in whom faithful servants find their peace. Look in mercy on the departed, that they may see your salvation. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Father, your Christ is revealed as the one destined to be rejected. Look in mercy on us who now turn towards his passion. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord God, you kept faith with Simeon and Anna and showed them the infant king. Give us grace to put all our trust in your promises and the patience to wait for their fulfilment through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now come to our prayers of penitence and contrition, praying for God's reconciling love in our lives. Hear the words of our Saviour Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall never walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let us therefore bring our sins into his light and confess them in penitence and faith. Father Eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high has broken upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you.
Father in Christ, there has sprung up a light for the righteous. Accept the gifts we bring before you, and grant that Christ may shine in us, to the praise and glory of your name. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise, through Jesus Christ, who is one with you from all eternity. For on this day he appeared in the temple in substance of our flesh, to come near to us in judgment. He searches the hearts of all your people, and brings to light the image of your splendour. Your servant Simeon acclaimed him as the light to lighten the nations, while Anna spoke of him to all who looked for your redemption. Destined for the falling and rising of many, he was lifted high upon the cross, and a sword of sorrow pierced his mother's heart, when by his sacrifice he made our peace with you. And now we rejoice and glorify your name, that we too have seen your salvation, and join with angels and archangels in their unending hymn of praise. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, at the, who on the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God here among us, God in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all peoples. Amen. Justice like mountains, high soaring. 
glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Christ, whose glory fills the skies, fill you with radiance, and scatter the darkness from your path. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, Gladden your eyes and warm your heart. Amen. Christ the day spring from on high, draw near to guide your feet into the way of peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.